Welcome to the Model Car Hobby Headquarters Fun Podcast with your host, Luca C. Now, here he is, Luca C. Well, hello, my fellow car modelers. How are you doing today? We've got a real special guest today, Mark Batson. Uh, if you're not familiar with him, uh, you, if you have been around in the hobby for a while, he was a big contributor a few years back in Scale Auto. He's been on the cover. You've seen his models, and when you when you see them, you'll you'll know who he is. And he's got a great new YouTube channel that he's doing all all the spreads of all his builds. And and I'm going to let him talk because you know you guys have heard me before. So, uh, Mark, <laughs> thanks for thanks for coming on. This is going to be fun. I've been looking forward to this. We got a well, bunch of neat stuff to talk about. Thank you, Luca. It's a privilege to be here, and thanks for the invitation. I really oh, appreciate it. Believe me, I've been an admirer of yours for a long time, so this is the, the privilege is all on this side. Tell you about it. Well, thank you. I mean, I even I had to throw these models up here. This is in honor of you because when I think of you in your building, I think of that Super Bowl car, and I know that you are a Days of Thunder fan like I am. I am. I am. <laughs> so these had to go up there in the background. All right. Well, let's let's kind of just start from the beginning of your story. Like, uh, what got you into this? That was my dad. Uh, my dad in the 50s and 60s was a, a big time hot rodder and uh, a drag racer. And so were my uncles. So um, hanging around the house. And he was also a model builder. So he would build models. And of course, my mom would not let me play with them. <laughs> um and so I always kind of hounded him from the time I was about five or six years old about, I want a model. I want a model. I want a model. And he told me when I was six, he said, okay, when you're six, I'll let you start. I'll help you. And, uh, we went to a place, I think it was JM fields. And I picked out, uh, the very first model he already had was a 24th scale monogram, uh, green Hornet roadster. And, uh, I wanted to build that so I'd have something to play with and, and to tinker with. Boy, I wish I knew where that thing was now. Um, I have that uh, probably three or four of them that I've picked up on eBay in different places when I've seen them at swap meets. And um, I, I, my intention is to really build one of these things using the technologies and, and the stuff, the goodies that we have today. Um, I just hadn't done it yet. You know, we all have, we all have, so many projects in our minds and in our hearts. We just want to keep doing, oh. I have so many started now. I don't know. I don't know where to go, but oh. dad being a hot rodder, I learned so much about cars from he and my uncles. They used to quiz me in the garage about what is this harmonic balancer? What is this alternator? What is this intake? What is this? You know, just all over. So at seven, eight years old, I started learning a lot about cars early on. Uh, my first cars and through a lot of it today, I do my own oil changes still. Uh, I remember my very first car, 65 Mercury Comet 289, uh, the first one. And I remember going to the store and, and at, at 16, 17, getting the plugs, points, condenser button, rotor, all of that stuff, changing it. You remember how you used to set the points with a matchbook cover? <laughs> I remember. Yeah, I remember, I remember that. that too. I'm yeah, not. I remember doing that stuff too. And um, I've always loved working on cars. And that's how I got started was with that one. My second, third cars were, were one that is one of your favorites, actually, is the AMT 40 Ford Coupe oh. and sedan. Heck yeah. Uh, I remember going to a drugstore with my dad uh, not long after I finished, which I think I finished that Roadster in a day uh, with him. And he, his big thing was patience, son, hold on, let it dry. Leo. Um, but I, we went and got, um, the 40 Ford coupe went back to the same drugstore and bought the, uh, back when drugstores carried this stuff, the 40 Ford sedan, uh, later 3940 sedan. It was, it was a blast. Uh, and from there I just kept going. And then when I got in my teens, uh, in high school, I discovered girls and, you know, that kind of, <clears throat> You yeah, back that, away a that little. can end it. Oh, and, it could. And, and then, uh, of course, in the 70s, during that phase, uh, MPC released the um, the stock car series. And that got me back into it again a little bit. So, And then from there on, it's just it's just been on and off, on and off for a while. Um, you, but, you, couldn't, you couldn't take your hands off that, that Petty Roadrunner, right? That's the one. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> 
Yeah. And you know, that's my absolute all time favorite. If you can't tell from what's behind me in my shirt, no. I am an ab I am an avid Richard Petty fan. No. Uh, have been since the very first race I went to with my dad in Darlington. Uh, I think that was 68. And there was this in, in the field, this brilliant blue car. And I just, I didn't even know who drove it. And, but I just, that was my car. That was the car I was going to pull for. That was my favorite car. That's It's and, right uh, behind you, right? In the picture behind you in the corner. One, yeah. That's actually the 70 flat nose. Oh, okay. And of all of the petty cars, the 70 flat nose, a lot of people like the Superbird, and it is classic and I love it, but the flat nose and the uh, 71 are my all time favorite petty cars. Uh, and that's um, the one that he crashed in Darlington. Yes. Yes. The 70 flat nose. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's, that was my favorite, favorite car, um, along with the 71, but yeah, cool stuff. Cool stuff. Just the right time period to, to get into cars. Yeah. You know, we, we, us older guys are pretty fortunate to be, I look, I think I'm a little younger than you, but I remember I was very influenced by the sixties, the late sixties and early seventies cars. I was playing with the matchbox. I immediately fell in love with cars. So I could totally relate everything you're oh, saying. Muscle cars, drag cars. I, I just love it all. I really yeah. do. And it shows by your model building, all the different subjects you, you, uh, you've done. Well, thanks. Yeah. Then you, uh, you went ahead and, uh, uh, kept on building model cars, but, uh, moving forward, when you started really getting into this high detail stuff that you did, and then mm -hmm. you, you got noticed, put on the cover scale auto and, uh, you had this exploded view of, uh, of race cars. And, and one thing I noticed right away is this dude who's building these cars with the wheels off the engine out, the valve covers off really an interesting way of going about building a model car. I think this, this guy has, has tinkered around with race cars. <laughs> i bet you he has something tells me so yeah in, did you? And, uh, in, in i think it was uh 78 77 or 78 i started hanging around um lonnie perkle's race shop and uh that was not far from mike laughlin's place and at that time fountain in south carolina which is not that far from us and uh, of course they were doing uh, butch lindley's cars as well and i started hanging around the shop and just watching and hanging in next thing you know i was working on the cars the next thing I know, I'm invited, you know, hey, do you have an NASCAR license? No, I don't. So I got a NASCAR license and uh, was privileged to be able to, to join the team and, and go to Greenville Picking Speedways where we started and really just start learning. And then I started being the rear, rear end guy. So the Franklin quick change rear ends and the rear suspension was kind of what I was uh, supposed to be doing. And, um, it, it was a great learning thing because we learned, uh, or I learned uh, stuff that I didn't know about stock cars at the time, even back then air pressures in the tires, springs, spring rubbers, uh, adjusting the wedge, the jack screws, all of the stuff that I had no clue was in it. I was uh, able to learn. And that did carry over into the model building Oh yeah, quite a bit, because when you get to crawl all over these cars, and even in the, the drag cars, I remember as, as being young in the pits at the, our local drag strips, uh, just going around and looking at everybody's cars, seeing where they had stuff uh, and, and talk about great incentives. Man, I wish we had uh, I had a camera back then that I could have taken all these pictures. Oh, of. that would have been oh, even too. more. But thank goodness for Hot Rod Magazine and, and Stock Car Racing Magazine, all that stuff, because it really is great information. Great information. If you remember, Scale Auto did the series called Pit Pass. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And yeah, I oh, love that man, thing. great stuff there, too. Great stuff there. But yeah, when you have. Uh, uh, the knowledge and hanging around these Laughlin chassis and as well as I, I was privileged to work on a couple of banjos, but I really know, knew the Laughlin chassis better. Yeah. Um, but it, it, you do have a little more insight in, um, in building them. Yeah. Uh, it, working on them. If you've, if you've been around them. Yeah. Cause when you, when you're sitting there and you're building like your typical monogram, uh, stock car, like, like either the Ford, or like everybody calls it the Ford chassis, but that can go anywhere that, that banjo chassis, it's in the Ford kits. You have the Mike yeah. Laughlin chassis yeah. and the GM kits and, you know, Salvino's have been repopping that, which is awesome. 
Uh, you never have too many yes, of those. Indeed. <laughs> never have too many of those. But uh, and, and I've continued on how that's like my favorite kit of all time, really. And they did such a good job with them, knowing the real chassis. Uh, it's neat when you look at it when from that perspective that you're talking about of actually working on the real thing is uh, when you're putting these models together, you know what every little part is and does and how. And that, that changes your perspective from a lot where you kind of got that little edge over some guys uh, that like when you look at the rear end and you see that panard bar and the truck arms and all that, you can in your head, you know how it functions. So you know mm -hmm. how to properly lay mm -hmm. it out in the model or if you want to go heavier with detail and make things look a little more realistic and with paint or if you make it movable or everything, you, you, you know, you already know really how it really works. And that that kind of engineering in your head kind of helps you create a, a even a, a more extreme model that's why when i looked at your models i knew you had that background before i ever talked to you <laughs> oh just because <laughs> you know it's it's uh, just I, i've had people that actually uh we we talk about um rivet counting and, and nitpicking yeah. uh one guy said well they don't have those chains in there one time he's looking at the <laughs> it was the superflow car but it was the chain that uh, attaches to the chassis goes down to the rear end to keep those truck arms the whole rear end from dropping all the way to the ground yeah you and, know uh, <laughs> i'm sorry for interrupting you i, I got yeah, something go to say i got something to say about those chains i remember a great article by uh there's, there was already something i got slammed people think that i i bashed this guy and didn't i have big respect for him and he did great articles on detailing stock cars, but in an article once, and I believe I, I thought this was true at the time, he put the chain in there and mentioned that that was put in to retain the the rear end that if the car started to flip, the rear end would stay in. And then I had a friend oh. of mine years ago who, um, you know, before I got into actually working on race cars and pitting a, a stock car and knowing why that changed there. He was a member of Alan Kowicki's team. And he said, oh, no, no, that's not what those are for. Do you really think right. that would hold the rear end in? No, it's when we jack the cars up, it keeps the rear end at the height that needs to be so the spring doesn't fall out in a pit stop. Exactly. That's exactly, exactly what it's there for. Yeah. And uh, uh, I'll probably get bashed by somebody because I'm saying this guy was well, not. And, and you know, just, that's right. That's what the chain was for. And that, that is what it was for. It's little things like that that... Uh, um, you know, you know, people like that person didn't even know that those chains exist. But yeah, it's a, that's that's a detail I've put in the cars that I've never seen a lot of a lot of people do is that little chain. It's mm -hmm. it's uh it's it's it looks cool in there to me. It does because you know actually it does. Belong. I think it I think it yeah. really does look cool in there. Yeah, it does, especially when you actually you can get those little chains from the trains. And that's why when I do some videos on this stuff, I like to talk about all that thing. And that's where now you're having the chance with your YouTube channel. The people who don't get the opportunities like you and I to actually been into those cars and, and touch them and, and, and know how that stuff works. We translate that information to them to help them build a more accurate model if they choose to do so. Oh, absolutely. Uh, yeah. one, one thing that I learned from other modelers whether it's from um, our local club, uh, the South Carolina Model Association, whether it's uh, when we go to Atlanta, Toledo, wherever it is, I kind of look forward to seeing my friends as much as, as the models. The models yeah. are great inspiration. I learn, and when I see something that I don't know how in the world it was done, the great thing about what we do is the fellowship of the guys that don't mind, hey, how did you do this? And even today, I learn something new all the time, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's something I stumble on or something I see on your channel or someone else's channel. It's awesome. Uh, they may be doing the same thing I'm doing, but they have a quicker or easier way to do it. Awesome. I'm all oh, in for that, man. Definitely. Big time, big time. And several times I've found things that I'm doing and I'm going, man, I've been doing it the long way, taking the long way around <laughs> and they've got an easier way of doing it and it looks better. Yeah. Wow. Uh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, uh, dog's never too old to learn new tricks, right? <laughs> nah, no. Nah. You know, Abraham Lincoln said, you know, I never cared for a man that didn't learn something new every day. Well, yeah. I agree with him. I so. totally agree. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's a great thing about the fellowship of, of sharing this stuff. Um, and I do learn um, every week. There's, it seems that I'll see something that I'll, the trigger me just kind of 
wow, never thought of that. And it's, it's, it's fun to learn. Oh, absolutely. That is, I think that is a big part of this hobby is, is the learning of the vehicles. Uh, you know, there, no matter mm -hmm. what you're doing, whether it's race cars or like, there's a friend of mine who's a great new you. Well, he's not a new YouTuber anymore, but his channel is blowing up as the, the muscle car modeler. I enjoy yeah, watching yeah. his channel. I, Raul knows so much about the history of muscle, you know, the muscle car era muscles or just cars. I mean, he, he just, he's a smart guy and just knows about that stuff. And I love watching his channel and he's just showing his model and he explains about the real car. And th to me, that's just so interesting. It is. It is. And in fact, on some of his, I've even learned things about the real cars that, that I'm like, wow, how did I not know that? Yeah. Uh, and there it is. There it is. Now with my channel, uh, of course, my channel is only a month old. And I started off while I was waiting on between camera equipment, microphone, uh, some lights, things that I need to, to do some how to's. I thought, well, I have all these pictures left over from uh, the magazine days. And I thought, well, I'll just do some slideshows. So I started off with, I think the first one was the Dodge Daytona. Mm -hmm. And it was just the, the progress of the build all the way through as a slideshow. Um, but I am eager to get into now sharing some of the how to stuff. Uh, and in fact, guys, if you see anything in any of those, uh, slideshows that you're interested in seeing specifics of how it was made, just message me. It's no big deal. Just, uh, message, uh, there on Facebook and, or excuse me, YouTube. And, uh, if I get enough interest, I'll jump on it. Oh yeah. That, that's one thing you'll learn is, is I, I, I know there's been other uh, YouTubers that have told me, you know, I, I don't read the comments and I go, you're crazy now to, uh, don't be scared of the guy. There's going to be haters and you just have to have thick skin and you just kind of laugh those guys off. But the majority of the comments are great people, viewers that support you. And then they make suggestions. So there, there's so many videos I've made because I've had a comment, a viewer say, you know, what about doing a video on that? So that is a great mm -hmm. resource for ideas because, I, like I said, <laughs> I'm, I'm not that smart to come up with this stuff on my own. I got to have some help. Well, honestly, I've actually left uh, some folks a uh, message as well about, you know, hey, how did you do this or would like to see this? That's how we learn. That's how we learn. Yeah, that's the best way to be, too, because anybody who says, I, I know it all and you don't need to tell me nothing, they're... <laughs> They're not going to really go, go very far. I, I you, you just got to always be open and learning. And again, it creates such a, uh, a camaraderie be between us builders when we get together at shows and learn from one another. That's that yeah. like, just like what you said, that is, that's what I get excited about going to a model show about more than anything. Mm -hmm. And, you know, everybody has their own, their favorite, uh, for example, a lot of people talk about what glue to use. Well, everybody has their favorite. Now, yeah. what works for me may not be your favorite, but, you know, hey, what works for me is what I want to get across, I guess, is, is in sharing. This is what I use and it works for me. But if you have something that works for you better, um, hey, I'm all in for checking it out. And yeah, who knows? You, it may you work never for me know. Better. You never it know. For me better. Yeah. Yeah. That very thing kind of changed me with glues where I started getting more into this. I discovered that uh, to me, an extra thin quick set starting to become my favorite glue when I was a huge super glue, you know, uh, CA glue fan. And I still like that glue and it's got its place, but I found myself using this other glue more that I learned from other, other builders. Cause I just, mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I'll give it a try. And, and when you're, if I'm honest, I probably use four different types of adhesives mm -hmm. <laughs> depending yeah. on what it, what it is I'm working on. And uh, now when it comes to body filler, or putty. That's the, the big thing is I use the 3M uh, spot putty on about everything. And it's not that I have tried some stuff that I think dries quicker and sands maybe a little better, but honestly, I am so old <laughs> and so used to using what I have used. It works. But that's what I stick with. And that's okay. Uh, if people have their, their favorite, then stick with it, man, whatever works for you. Yeah. It's about having fun. Exactly. Fun. And the, the putty thing's kind of funny. Um, and I, I used to use 
the three and I still have some if I need it, like for little stuff, I use it. But um, talking about old friend of mine that I've mentioned before, and you had the privilege of meeting Frank Bennett. Frank, great guy. Amazing, amazing. Well, we've talked about his work. You know, we just talked about that Richie Evans car uh, on the phone and that alone, just the body work he did. I watched him do that. But mm. he was. Oh, you, 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 he would see something of mine that I had that red 3M putty. Oh, I, I think he would, his, the top of his head would blow off. He was, <laughs> and, and, and the stuff that he used, and I use it, Evercoat Metal Glaze, which is an amazing yep. product. Yep. The two part product, I'm kind of lazy. You know, the two part <laughs> thing gets on my nerves sometimes. I think but that's kind of me too. <laughs> it really is incredible. But, uh, that's all he would use is that and 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 a few other products that are like that. You know, he came from that industry. And when he'd see the 3M stuff, he'd he'd cringe. <laughs> hey, you know, <laughs> it, I, I do find places that it works. Sometimes you just need a little bit of putty really quick just to fill in a few pinholes and it does the job fast. <laughs> yeah, just simple quick stuff. Yeah. But you know, like you've been doing it for so long, it's it's what works for you. And yeah. And of course you have models that are pretty old now and they're still holding up. So been, I've watched all your slideshows and, and I've seen that, see your body work on there. You do some extensive body work. You don't leave anything mm -hmm. alone out of the box. No, it's very difficult for me to do that. Uh, <laughs> I have built a few out of box kits. Uh, actually, it's hard for me to do those anymore. But because uh, it's the temptation of, oh, I've got to throw a wire over here. Or I've got to do this over there. Mm -hmm. So to do something totally out of box is difficult. But I have done a few recently and I'm very pleased with uh, the way they turned out. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's very difficult when you when you know about real cars and you want to make them as realistic as possible. It's really hard not to do that. It's like that first car I built, that that Green Hornet uh, Roadster. Um, I, at first I thought, well, I'm going to go back and I'm going to do one of them totally out of box the way I did it when I was a kid, but, but clean it up. And then I want to do one in just full blown detail. I don't know that I can do it out of box. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I may try, I may try. How many, uh, projects do you have that you pulled out? I think I'm going to do an out of the box and then it, it, <laughs> it went into Almost every time I've tried to do that, it just ends up going into another direction. Uh, Can't seem to. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I find happens. myself wanting to do out of the box a little more now because I have so many ideas or semi out of the box that I'm trying to build models a little bit simpler. And not everyone has to be a blowout showstopper. Uh, right. or else I just can't. I just can't finish them. <laughs> Well, a great example, let me grab this real quick here. Great example of that was I was going to do one out of box because my wife's birthday is the end of the month and she wanted her favorite car. Her first car was a Valiant. Her second car was a 69 Barracuda Coupe. Mm. Well, you know, they make the, uh, they make the fastback, but um, Bandit oh, Resin boy. came out with the Coupe. So... I thought for her birthday, I would make her a coupe in the uh, Blue Fire, which I've already ordered and gotten in from uh, MCW. And I was going to do that totally out of box, just something for her, uh, her office. And since I got that in, I've already picked up the, <laughs> the plug wires and I've already picked up <laughs> ah, here the hoses and, you know, there goes that can of worms. I hear yeah, it opening. So what in my mind and heart was, was okay. Let's do this out of box now has turned into, I'm going to do more than out of box, uh, on, on her Barracuda. And you know what? That's okay. Cause I'm going to have fun doing it. Yep. Definitely. Definitely. That's the point. Fun. And if that's how yeah. you like building, then, uh, by all means, jump on it. I may even do a build video. In fact, I think I will do a build video. You should. Video I mean, that. since you're now doing it, you got your equipment now and yeah. you should, you should. I know everybody would love to see it. If you haven't, I'm telling you, if you haven't watched these videos, just even just, just the slideshows, they're done really well. Mark, you did a great job on them. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. I stayed glued to them and I am the worst ADHD you can find. 
Um, I don't know about that. <laughs> I, I, you uh, ask my wife, I don't yeah, know about that. It's a tough one for me. I stayed glued. I, I would put them on. I really, really liked the Daytona one. Uh, that was really good. But they, they were all good. But And then I just recently watched your Tony Nancy. That was a mm -hmm. good one. That, that, that's that your, was, the latest one, right? Yeah. Now, that was uh, one of those that was actually a theme at uh, Toledo one year. I think it was cover cars, uh, magazine cover cars. Yeah. So you notice in there, there was a magazine cover and that, mm -hmm. that competed in the magazine uh, cover. I love challenges like that too. Oh. Uh, Birmingham one year had uh, a challenge of big and littles. And I did, um, I don't know if you can see them, but uh, in the littles, it was large scale and small scale. And that's an 87th scale, 40 <laughs> Ford coupe. <laughs> and, um, and of course I dropped that, but I love the challenges like that. One of yeah. them year was wheelie cars. So the car had to have a driver in it and the front end off the ground and, and in a wheelie. So I, I did one of those I, because there's something outside that box of just, you know, I, most people know me for NASCAR because that's one of my passions mm -hmm. and I'm, I am going to get back into those, and especially the vintage NASCAR. Uh, but I do love the vintage drag stuff too. Yeah, I really do. Yeah, that yeah, I just I love race cars, everything. And but yeah, the vintage NASCAR is a huge passion of mine and and the drag racing, of course, but um yeah, you, you, I just can't get enough. <laughs> no, I love I, I love models of that stuff too when 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 some of the creative stuff. But the the thing on the the Nancy car that um really caught me was of course that front suspension or eh, somewhat suspension on those cars but you had that posable steering down and i loved how the 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 camber leans and everything like that yeah uh, it yeah. was, it well, was I, I dynamite remember, looking. Uh, i remember at the the races in atlanta one time with uh one of my uncles the um the wheels when the the rails would well top fuel yeah would come in you'd see them kind of lean over as they turned and that inspired me so when that one was sitting there the tony nancy car you're talking about i had to do that i, I couldn't help it i had to do oh that. yeah <laughs> i know and that's the, me too because I, I am i'm a suspension geek and w years ago when i first saw those those old rail cars and and they would have that straight axle and that those those wheels would tilt when they turn and I, at back then just didn't understand why and how now I get the geometry of it and why uh, it's such a neat, neat look. It is. Those things. Cause they're, they're not designed to go left and right. They're supposed to go straight. So they have such extreme caster in them. When those wheels turn, it's just natural. They fall over. Oh, like you were saying, I didn't understand it back then either, but I thought it looked cool. Yeah. It just looked so, cool. Hey, so. <laughs> so I'm going to do that. I don't know why it's doing that, but. But it's cool later on when you learn why. That was something that definitely caught my eye because, again, love suspension stuff. And th that's Thanks. that's what's cool about, like, a, 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 your NASCAR builds. And, and, you know, I can see you, you your, your cars, you made them. And we talked about that because you knew you made them look like they really would work. Like, you could get into that Superflow car and set the wedge in that thing by screwing the, <laughs> screw, screwing the screw jacks down. That, that car was pretty cool. Something that uh, a fr friend of mine mentioned not long ago was he said, it's amazing what inspired that car. And then I started thinking, I thought, hey, he's right. What inspired that to begin with is normally I would build them like anyone else with the engine in the car and maybe with the wheels off and all that stuff. But I was in the hobby shop one day and saw a detail master carburetor detail set that it was one of the new ones and it had the restrictor plate in the pack. You know, which one I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I got restrictor plate is actually on the sprue. Yep. Uh, and I thought, wow, man, a restrictor plate. And then, so I bought it and then I started thinking, well, you know, if I put this on the car and put the carburetor on it, nobody's going to see it. And so it, the inspiration for doing the exploded view of that actually came from that. So it could be beside on that little cart beside it, That's... carburetor, restrictor plate, nuts and bolts, then the engine with the bolts for the carburetor to go on. And that's how that came to be. You know, uh, and along that's something, with the transmission for that. Oh yeah. And with the transmission for that, I'd done all this work on the linkage 
And I thought, I'm going to put this in the car and nobody's going to see it. So I thought, well, let's do it like it's in the shop or something like that, where you will be able to see it. It'll be displayed beside the car and all the lines uh, under the hood will be just hanging loose like they're waiting for the engine. So, yeah. and as it turned out, that was very well received, apparently. A bit. Yeah. Got on the cover <laughs> scale auto. Yeah. That was a, uh, that was quite a thing. I remember everybody talking about that. And well, that of course there all, were some people that, all inspired by a restrictor plate. So yeah, that was yeah. Isn't that something that's, <laughs> that's neat to know a uh, model I've just known of for so many years. And that's what spark. It's funny how the littlest thing will spark an idea. Yeah. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Yeah, that's cool. And that kind of spawned a whole way of building. Nobody was really doing that. And then you started seeing some guys kind of copying you. Not in a bad way. I mean, it, it's just like you inspired people and they started doing a few of them. And around that time period, there were quite a few. Uh, mostly NASCARs were being done that way. But you started seeing a lot of guys doing these taking apart cars. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah and that and the style what's the style oh oh batson style yeah, yeah. Oh, that that tickled me to death i had to laugh and i, I emailed clay kemp about that clay <laughs> uh apparently well in one of the magazines he built one a car that was similar to that and uh jim halt with scale auto sent me an email said hey you have a style and i didn't know what he was talking about and then uh he sent the uh just a little thing out of uh article that clay had done in there and he says i'm doing this one batson style and uh for clay kemp to say something like that because you yeah. know clay in my opinion is probably one of the best model car builders yeah. of all time i think uh and if you hadn't checked his channel out do that too absolutely um, as i i've even reached out to him i, I want to get him on this show too oh you I've should talk to him you should. yeah yeah it's i'm he's uh, he's a busy guy but that'd be fun i want him to come on here and Oh, he is channel. always busy. He is yeah. covered Clay, up with, with something all the time. And then all of a sudden, that that awesome. article hit Scale Auto with that uh, Dodge race truck. Yes. Now, that was uh, the first one that I ever saw up close, and that was in Atlanta in, I think, 04 or yeah. uh, 05, something like that. Wow. It just blew me away. Yeah, that... that uh, but, that article well I, deserved best of show there. oh it was it that, was, that was, truck was, was amazing unreal. and i know that when that that magazine i remember um i told you this and i don't think clay knows this because he he met frank but uh yeah that truck and that article was frank's inspiration to build that sunoco camaro that you guys all saw and went ooh ah when you mm -hmm. met frank in, in uh in alabama uh, yeah, where, yeah. Clay where was, was down there. It, yeah, yeah, Clay and I talked to him, and it, it's yeah, that was some awesome work. That All was awesome the work. it was it was your car and and that that car that uh, um, really inspired Frank. And to meet you guys, he was he was felt like he was meeting rock stars. <laughs> he was really happy that he became friends. <laughs> oh when he boy, came back. that's he old was rock real excited in my case. About that. <laughs> and he, uh, but yeah, that that car. I, he had that magazine and it was in tatters by the time he finished that um that sunoco car because he followed and i i even said in one of my old videos uh um i showed a tip in one of my tip videos and i said well i can't take credit for this because i because i got this from this article from clay kemp and it was using the cigarette paper the cigarette box paper for for the uh, mm -hmm. um foiled mm -hmm. uh, uh heat resistant stuff and uh and he contacted me, said, Oh, well, thanks for saying that. Eh, you know, well and that's deserved. where I learned that stuff. I, too. I never would have thought I saw that. St I used to be a, a heavy smoker and smoked Marlboro's lights and had that paper all the time. Never thought of it. And my goodness, it's mm -hmm. perfect scale. It looks perfect. Mm -hmm. And, you know, little things like that. I can't go in to Hobby Lobby or Michael's with my wife or anything like that uh, without looking at craft stuff. Oh yeah. And I have found things before that I've actually picked up and used that I would have never thought about until something like that, like the, the cigarette paper or pack paper, whatever. Yeah. Until that, that opens your mind to start looking at stuff that you normally wouldn't think about. Oh Not yeah. About. And then uh, walk into a train store. 
and look oh, at train detail stuff. No, let's not. Man, <laughs> <I'll>, <laughs> let oh, me tell you, man. I'll buy some train stuff, whether it's H O or O or what. I'll buy stuff. Oh, there. I've got a ton on my rack there. That's that's train stuff. I've, I've got. What do you got? Train detail stuff. Oh, please. It's oh, amazing yeah. what you can do with a glad hand or or one of the greatest things. I learned this from you remember Don Farney. Yeah. I've, I've talked about Don Farney. He he was one of those guys in the 80s doing the doing the crazy stuff that was realistic. I got to be friends with him. I was like, how do you make your your suspensions look like they move? He the joints and everything, he's in heim joints and stuff. He goes, Oh, HO handrail stanchions for, for model trains. Mm-hmm. Oh boy, did I I bought up a bunch of packs of those, man. Because they were perfect. They're just the, a little round ball on the end. They fit into aluminum tube and then they have a hole in them. Yep. They look like heim joints. Yeah, they do. Is and it? I have used um, and actually I've got one that's going in a custom Corvette that's a challenge thing that are the engage, you know, the little exhaust fans that go on top of the diesel engines down oh, the, yeah. the top. Yeah. Got to take those, the fans are, and the vents are two different pieces, snap that fan in there. And it looks just like an electric fan and a hot rod. Wow. I mean, just cool little stuff like that. Oh yeah. Yeah. You but go yeah, to definitely a, visit the train stores. Yeah. Go man, to the train store. They all look in their detail section and you just, you'll just start just have that imagination and just thinking cars and, Oh wow. This, that, that I've done it too many times. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you kind of, you kind of dipped out of the, out of the scene for a while. What were you doing? Well, I went racing. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I took Back about, to that. Uh, about a five year hiatus from, um, model building. Uh, I still built and collected, but, and guys, let me tell you, if you go RC car racing, man, if you think our hobby is expensive, and I know a lot of guys, especially the older guys, it, it, and it has gone up, but get into this because just like with real racing, when you get into RC racing um, to stay competitive, you've got to have the right equipment. I mean, you know, carbon fiber chassis, uh, adjustable coil over aluminum shocks, uh, just all of the top stuff. And I raced in, uh, sponsored and raced in three different divisions. If you can't tell, again, I'm a petty fan. I would so, never have known. <laughs> I this couldn't tell by the, the shirt National, and all the pictures. Grand National <laughs> Division cars, but we ran super modifieds as well. But to stay on top, a uh, top, you really had to, uh, to have top equipment. And, uh, well, I spent a lot of money in that, but you Just know what? Like real I mean, racing. Again, I made great friends and it was just a lot of fun, a yeah. lot of fun. But as I said, I still bought and collected, um, the models. I probably always will. And I like you or, or most people, if I never bought another model for the rest of my life and just built, worked on what I, I'd die before I got halfway through them. If mm -hmm. not, I don't know that I'd get halfway through them. Uh, yeah, no, I, I wouldn't know that. that. Too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, uh, I, I probably always will. Yeah. And, and the funny and, and then, and then you'll still see a kid at a swap meet that you don't have, or new kits are constantly coming out and you just still got to buy them. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I, I don't reckon the hobby 40 Ford kits I still have. Uh, and I, I'll, probably do something else with those too because yeah. i built the sedans and the, the coupes and the, the sedan deliveries oh uh, yeah done all of them uh still one of my like you the, the all-time I, I don't know what it even when like Ravel came out with which is a fantastic kit and i got a couple of them i don't mm -hmm. i don't feel like building that one i want to build the old amt one i love that kit it's just it just goes together so well and mm -hmm. it's simplistic but it it it's just enough. You don't need to really worry yeah, about it. Yeah. But the one thing like, like I like the, uh, the deluxe nose. And if you remember Ravel when they was it Ravel, yeah. Ravel came out with that one. Um, the, the coupe that they did was it was a standard standard grill, but then they did a convertible that was deluxe. So the way the kit was, I was trying to figure out, I bought both of them to try to put them together to do a, a, a deluxe coupe. And I cut the front fenders off and um, I really botched it up. I mean, I, it's fixable, but I used 
you know, the wrong tools. And I've discovered, you know, that was way before I discovered that scribing tool from Tamiya, which if I had that, I would have been oh, able to yeah. do it a lot better. Yeah. That is just a great tool. Highly recommend it. If nobody, if you guys out there don't have that tool, I've said it a million times. It's a tool worth buying. It is. It is. You have one? <laughs> I do. <laughs> <laughs> Figured. You know, you were quite the contributor in, in Scale Auto. It was about, you know, 10, 15 years ago when, you, you know, Clay got in there and you got in there a lot. You put, did some good articles. Yeah, I think even we, before we that, started, we started about the same time, I yeah, think. Even before that, in the older magazines, you had made it in. I remember seeing you sent me a picture of something. It was in an old that black was, and white magazine, but I remember seeing that, that tied Indy car. And I think I told you that is at the time, I didn't realize it was you. I didn't really know who Mark Batson was back then, but Daryl Waltrip was my guy. And this was at in the t- Daryl Waltrip tied days. Love that paint scheme. Love that car. And I was thinking, I want to do a different race car with Tide on it. And I mm-hmm. pulled out one of the monogram uh, Indy cars. That was when they first came out. And I started, I had it all primed up. I was getting ready to paint it. And I wanted, I had the decals out of the, because uh, I bought a bunch of those Tide cars just for the decals. There were no aftermarket at the time. And then I saw that picture of yours. <laughs> <laughs> And you did it exactly was the way I was going to do mine. And well, that was that was really just for fun. I had to do some research neat. on those uh, research on the March uh, Indy cars, but I thought it would be unique to do something uh, that didn't exist and then have some fun with it. Now, did you notice the Hoosier tires? Yep. So uh, I had some of the um, replicas and miniatures of Maryland tire stencils oh i still that, have those uh, i love those who's your good year for 24 25th scale all these things so um i dropped those on there and and stenciled them as who's your indy car tires basically um and detail the end plumb the engine wired it up all that stuff and like you were saying you were going to do take those tide decals fade the paint from the orange in the front all the mm. way back and then put the big tides on the engine cowl yeah. And it was a fun build. And lo and behold, it was first place in the, the open wheel category, which shocked me because I figured for accuracy, it doesn't exist, but you never know. You never right. Know. Right. Yeah. It was, it, was I mean, it was, it's a fee, especially at that time, it was a very feasible sponsorship for other race cars. Well, yeah. Yeah. I started working on a funny car. And after that, I scrapped that idea and went to, to doing a funny car. I never finished it, but. Yeah. It, now that would have been cool. Yeah. But, you know, that was, I, that was, uh, the very first car that was in scale auto was, was that one. Oh, really? Do you have, uh, do you well, have any the color pictures one, of it? Do you still have that happened. model? No, I don't have the model. I don't know what happened to it between moving oh, and all the other stuff. Bummer. Yeah. I it know. may be still in a box in, in either the garage or in one of the back rooms. <laughs> the one I sent you was the first one that was actually in the magazine. Yeah. And in that, that same show, I think I had a rusty Wallace car that was, yeah. Uh, yeah. That rusty Wallace off. car was neat. I remember um, those. And then I never connected until you did that and sent all the, all that stuff to me last week. I, I never connected that. That was you. I didn't pay attention or remember the name because yeah. it was such a long time period, but yeah. Figures. Cause I remember that rusty Wallace car. I think, uh, after that, when you got onto the cover of Scale Auto, it was that 88 um, record-breaking uh, uh, Daytona of Buddy Baker's, right? That was the first one that got on the cover of Scale Auto? No, I think the Superflow car was the first one. Was but it? It was on a cover. Yeah, cover car was uh, was the Superflow car. Okay, yeah, that would have been the, it. That's uh, when I the Daytona was heard the second about this one. Mark Batson fella. <laughs> And then you did some you did some great articles on how to do a detailed uh, a, a detailed radiator, and then you did some great carburetor detail. Um, oh, carburetors! Yeah, uh, carburetors, really great article, and really detailed kit articles. Reviews, kit reviews too. Yeah, and uh, those were those are always kind of fun because you get to actually say what you how you feel about a kit. Yeah, as far as hey, look, I don't recommend this, or I do recommend it because of this is that and that kind of stuff. So those were kind of fun, and again, those were kind of hard to do straight out of box, but that's what they wanted. So yeah, uh, that's what you did. So when they sent the kit, that's what they expected. But uh, fun nonetheless. Oh yeah, yeah, that was that was great great contributing to the hobby by getting involved in scale auto and, and sharing what you know and what you've done. Um, that's a, that's a cool thing and it's enjoyable. I yeah, always wanted yeah. to, 
I had a few articles. I, I contributed to, to Scale Auto by doing a few contests, um, photos and stuff like that. And it's just neat getting published in the magazine. And now we've it got is. this platform. Now, all the things I always wanted to do articles about and get them into the magazine, whether they were really, really uh, great, you know, great things happening or, you know, some of the not so great things I like to kind of report on this channel, not, not popular, but needs to be talked about. Uh, I, you know, this, this uh, YouTube now is kind of the new magazines for us. It's a it natural is. fit for it like is. you and Clay to come on here. I, I, and I said, Hey, you need any help? Let me know. And at first he wasn't going to do it. And I kept saying, Oh dude, you got to, you have so much to give. And same with you. Yeah. When you came on, I thought these are two natural, perfect for this medium. Now, uh, the hobby needs you on, on YouTube. And uh, it, I'm so glad to see both of you doing some really great videos. Well, thank you. My oh, wife yeah. has been telling me to do it for three years. She's the like, wives are usually the smart Maybe. ones. Uh, my wife is awesome. For three years, she has hounded me about, you ought to do it. You ought to do it. You ought to do it. Because she'll catch me watching your channel or others. And she'll go, you should do that. And I'm like, oh, you know, I had that grumbly little, you know, I don't have time and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. and, and yeah, I, I'm semi-retired. We own a, a business on the side that that we do trade shows and stuff. And, um, and, and it's fun, but I, it's not a seven day a week job or a five day a week job. So I do have the time. And, um, so finally, um, I decided, well, I'm going to do it. And then Clay announced he was going to do it. And I thought, well, I'll pick his brain a minute. And, um, uh, so here we are. Here yeah. we are. What a great addition to, uh, you know, the YouTube platform, you guys coming on to for model car. YouTube well, like world. I said, it, it is fun and I don't mind sharing and, and some of the, some of the stuff, it may be again, my way of doing it, but if it helps someone to get started or improve or what, whatever, uh, great. Because I, like I said, I learned something from YouTube or from, from the other modelers and our local club all the way through, um, going to the events. Oh yeah. Every time I go. Yeah. And then what ends up driving you as you're as your channel grows and you get the viewers and they're so supportive and they're so appreciative of what you do for them, that just, that, that drives you right there to want to do more and more when you think, Oh gosh, this is just so much work. No, and the people out there, you have no idea the work it takes to, to do these, these, uh, channels. It makes it worth it when you know that you're contributing something to help others enjoy this hobby that we enjoy so much. Yeah. I guess I've said it a million times, but thanks for coming on to YouTube and doing it for us. You know, well, I'm so glad to see, see you guys on here. You know, it's, I don't think there's ever going to be too many guys, but there's, there's more and more model car guys getting on YouTube lately and starting their own channels, no matter the, how big or small they are, mm -hmm. it's just contributing and giving, giving something back to the hobby and, and just making it you know, we're passing the, the information and, and then it also with this new, uh, new technology, you know, like, uh, you know, you and I hooking up and talking on the phone the other day that, that you, you even said, it. I mean, that's what makes it worth so much. I've done it with a few yeah. other YouTubers I've, uh, I've been talking to, um, yeah, it just brings brings the hobby closer together. The world is smaller. And as you said, with print being gone now, this is the magazine. It is. Mm -hmm. So sharing what we do, uh, I've gotten ideas. It, just this morning, I was watching someone do a, a 70 Dodge Charger, and the color just inspired me. Mm -hmm. now, I don't know that it'll be on a Charger, but I really like that color. And I thought, hmm, so yeah. there's something for another project. Oh, gosh. You know, Every day, a new idea pops in the head. I can, I, I remember this one time I was driving down the road and way far off in the distance ahead of me, I saw this black car coming my way. And for some reason, all of a sudden it looked to me, you know, something visual happened. It looked like a 69, a all black 69 GTO with wide fenders and big tires. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's what I saw as it got closer. It was probably like a Honda Civic or something. <laughs> you know, who knows? You know, it wasn't what I thought it was, but sometimes in a distance, you know, all of a sudden your imagination puts something else together. Bam. It inspired me. I got home and I started uh, working on a, 
on a GTO, I pull off the shelf and a, a 68 GTO and I, I put the fenders off of a, a 83 Thunderbird NASCAR kit. <laughs> 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 this thing's going to be wide and i got like pro street tires under it of course it's not finished it's in a box over there but hey it inspired me for for a couple of minutes i have fun starting projects i'll, I'll say <laughs> oh i do that too i've got and i know you did a thing on it about how many projects that you've got started and and are, that are sitting yeah. aside and it, it's amazing i'll be inspired by uh, something else and i'll start on it Mm. And then until the next thing gets my attention, but you know, I think that's the, the curse and the blessing. Both it is. The it is. I enjoy, um, you enjoy it. Yeah, you do. Fun, you fun. do. Those in little inspirations are, are, are another fun part. It, it, it is neat. Or you just, you know, you're watching TV and a car pops up something, or you're watching a race and you see something, a cool looking race car, cool paint job. And all of a sudden, ah, oh, I want, or you, yeah, you know, this, this YouTube, what it's given us is I can watch <laughs> a race, uh, a NASCAR race from 1981. All of a sudden, I want to build a 1981 stock car today. And the Facebook groups, you're just getting bombarded with, with inspiration. Almost too much, but it's fun. Some of the things I've seen on there, too, have inspired my real ride. Um, yeah. I have a 01 Silverado, and she oh. is low slung. So she, it, it's it's rotted up a little bit. I figured, you know, nice. every man needs a pickup, but at the same time, why can't you have the pickup and the rod at the same time? So <laughs> my son uh, yeah. dropped a bit and, uh, got a big block and, and oh, I, I have a yeah, blast that's with it. Cool. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. I've been kind of looking, looking like, well, my daughter and I were talking about going in together on a truck just to have a truck around because there's so many times we need a truck, but then I'm looking, I've been looking at some trucks and it uh all of a sudden you know i start thinking of the things i could do with that truck and it's like that's not the point of getting one but you know it'll happen every every car i buy all of a sudden has to become a hot rod and that's just a that's just oh, a bad thing that's a curse too that yeah. is a curse yeah. too but you know i i i i'll tell you what if i find a uh well late 90s uh single cab ford short short bed truck I'm going to be in trouble because uh, I'm going to immediately <laughs> want to make it look like a, like the early uh, NASCAR craftsman series trucks. Yep. I'll have to get that thing down on the floor. And uh, next thing I'll roll cage, <laughs> it'll just get ridiculous. <laughs> no, no, no. We need to, you know, haul some, some new furniture from the store home. And that. well, that, that was one of the things when I got my very first truck years ago was my wife said, do we need a truck? And I said, we ha a man has to have a truck to haul his stuff. Oh, absolutely. So, Hey, there you go. Yeah. yeah that's the excuse. Yeah. Got to have a truck. There's so many times we, we got a Lowe's right down the street. That's tempting enough as it is. And I'm always going over yes. there. My, my son-in-law has got a, a, a <laughs> Nissan Xterra. We use that for our truck and it does the job, but it's, it can be, it was a little tough when I had to go get a, uh, 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 I had to go pick up a, a fiberglass cowl hood I bought off a guy for my uh, Fox body Mustang and mm -hmm. it just barely fit in that in Nissan Xterra. But that's the only way I was prepared to strap it to the roof, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, need to pick up. Well, what do you, what do you got planned? What do you, is there anything you're working on right now? That's something like maybe when the shows start happening again, you're going to have something new to show the public. Uh, a couple of things that I'm working on. Now, some of them probably won't be ready. One of them probably won't be ready for a couple of months, but mm -hmm. it's a, um, uh, a 58 Corvette custom, which is a little out of my ballpark, but it was a challenge that the SCMA did a while back and, uh, it's long over with now, but I started the thing and it's just, I've got the engine fully plumbed, wired, everything done. And I got so much of the car it's probably 70% finished mm. and I want to wrap that up, but it is one of those full blown super detail, but it is a show car, um, more than, a, and, and a lot of the body work is carbon fiber as well as, um, the, the regular fiberglass. So it's, it's going to be a unique little build, I think. And I want to do that as a tribute to, uh, Ricky couch, who is a oh, modeler yeah. that inspired me many years ago. And, uh, he was a great builder. Oh man, Ricky was, Ricky was, he could do something that I can't do. I can see something and then start the wheels start turning on. Okay. How do I get that in that scale? 
that I need. That's a challenge, and I love doing that. But he could do that, but he could also add that creation right out of his mind and create something totally from scratch. I can't do that, but man, he had a gift for being able to just put together some of the, I don't want to use the word crazy because they were functional cars. Yeah. And I know at Salt Lake, he did really well. Every time he went, he did really so oh, yeah. with these cars. I mean, just wow. But I want to do that as a tribute to Ricky. Uh, he was a good friend and just a, he was a funny and an awesome guy. Yeah. Uh, so you, we'll be seeing that one coming up. I got, I got um, the opportunity when I lived uh, in the early nineties, when I lived in Virginia and went down to a show that was at Charlotte Motor Speedway. Uh, oh gosh, I'm going to screw this up. What the, there was a, a big, you know, model car sanctioning body or something like that. Like, like IPMS. I can't yeah. remember what they were called, but they put on this big, it was kind of a national show there at Charlotte Motor Speedway. And I think that was AMS, which was AMS, the Automotive, automotive yeah. Modeler Society. It, yeah. was, it was AMS. Thank you so much. Um, what a great bunch of guys got to meet all the AMS guys and that was such a fun fun show i don't know were you there i was you were Ah, in fact ricky gerald wolf and i drove drove up together because that was when i got to see i think i i i believe i met rick i think i met ricky and and i but i remember seeing his pro mod lumina oh yeah that's he brought the pro i remember seeing it in the magazines and then it was there on the table and you know you know dennis smith from up in oh up in yeah Virginia. so me and dennis at the time we were we had a table there and we were selling um selling detail supplies and and model kits and stuff and that was such a fun show another memory of that great show what was i don't know if you did this we all could go down to the school that was racing there and and take a ride in the in the school car so i got to go around charlotte motor speedway at race speeds Mm -hmm. did you do that i did not do that, oh, because that was... i had uh, i had a schedule so once we got set up i had to turn around and shoot back to spartanburg oh so i missed out on that oh that was a lot of fun that whole show was fun and me and then we're sitting there dennis and i were sitting there and the table right behind us um all of a sudden looked back and buddy baker sitting there signing autographs <laughs> uh and see, I missed that day too. Yeah, uh, that was, that was, it was, that is one of those model shows that I just remember real well. And I just had such a good time and so many neat things, met so many cool people, but that, that's what I, the, the model shows, I, I want to definitely start coming back to the South there. And like, I want to go to Atlanta. I want to make a point of going to a lot of shows back East now, um, where I was just missing out over the past couple of decades. Well, I'll tell those you, Atlanta, Atlanta is always those guys. Acme puts on a yeah. fantastic show every year. Really yeah. nice show. Great facility. Just, just awesome stuff. Yeah. I'm definitely shooting to when, when the next one happens, I'd really like to go to it. That would be good. You cool. can buy a lot of them. Okay. I will. You got <laughs> it. That's definitely a date. We'll do that. <laughs> definitely. Well, listen, Mark, oh, thanks for taking the time to be in on this. This is great. I, I really enjoyed rap. I always like talking with you now and we'll definitely talk more later. And well, uh, thanks real, for having me. Oh, geez. Well, real quick, why don't you just plug your channel? I'll put information right here. Okay. And All right. It is Mark Batson Model Cars, but you can also put in Hobby Dude 007. And there's a story behind that, but I won't get into <laughs> it right now. But uh, Hobby Dude 007 channel uh, or Mark Batson Model Cars, either one on YouTube. And uh, thank you in advance for taking a look. Hopefully yeah, definitely. You get something and, out of it and subscribe. And I want all of my subscribers to go on to Mark's and subscribe and let's get his uh his levels up so he can really get going on this youtube because i think he's got a lot to offer us so uh you go over there and check it out you're not going to be well, i'm working you're not going to be sad uh, working on the first how-to video uh this morning so uh, that yeah. ought to be up in either maybe tonight probably tomorrow right on uh, yeah i'm looking uh, forward to I've that got, uh, got a couple more coming but i think now that we've talked about it i am going to do a how-to or, or excuse me, I build along on my wife's uh, 69 Cuda. I think you should. So, that would um, be great. Again, that it's a little great. out of my race car stuff, but hey, I'm going to have fun no matter what. Yep. There's the key. The fun part. That's it. Well, I don't know uh, how many times you watch my unpodcasts here, 
But you know, I always ask the guests to sign off with with the call sign. Do you know? Do you know it? Can you do? Yeah, it? yeah. I, I think I've I've heard you enough. Because Aaron keeps messing it up. Oh yeah. Well, I might. I might. It's hey guys. All right. Keep on gluing those fingers together and chopping that or cutting that styrene. <laughs> styrene. <laughs> well, close. <laughs> it's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> all right thanks we so will much see, Luca. see you all in the next video oh thanks thanks a lot. for coming in the house <laughs> there you go all <laughs> thanks, righty man.